this time, I'll stand for the presentation case. Before we pause the dog, we thank you this morning for a wonderful, beautiful day, Lord, and the revealing the, the beauty of your creative work. And Lord, as we're going into this meeting this morning, this step is going to be conducted in an orderly manner. And Lord, and as we go through that, uh, this meeting, Lord, we ask thy blessing to be upon our administration and the council. And Lord, and as we come and show us the beauty of the, uh, the government of the Turkey nation, and Lord, that staff will all work together in, in the unity, and Lord, and as we go on throughout the day, uh, this tip is to wait on upon the guidance and that you will direct our path, Lord, and Lord, and as we go on out through this day, Lord, we give thanks unto you, and please we not forget our service people far and abroad, Lord, and wherever they may be, and Lord, that they come in contact and to harm and watch over them, Lord. And Lord, we just ask for this as we turn to the Lord. I bless and be upon each and every one that is present this meeting here this morning. In the glorious name of all those who say to Jesus, we do thank you. Amen. 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 Before we get started here this morning here, uh, we do have a memo here and uh, Councilman Bill Johnson has resigned from the following committee. Committees, he says. But uh, in effect, it's a meeting. So we'll only just take care of the culture and uh, language this day that he wants to uh, resign from this committee. What's the dog? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign? Carried. The other ones are listed to fill the period accordingly. All right, and so right at this time here, we'll, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, we didn't have a rule for this at first. All right, so we'll put it all together. Roll call, please. Sorry, Kenan. Honey. Bill Sharkey. Honey. Bill Franklin. Here. Bill John Mason. Here. Jack Baker? Here. Roger Thomas? Uh-huh. Justin Here. Meredith Bailey? Don Garvin? Uh-huh. Terry King? Jackie Bob Martin? Uh-huh. Terry Thornton? Terry Allen Watts? Uh-huh. All right. Uh, <coughs> let this memo stand as voted uh, on here, even though we didn't have a roll call to begin with. And so, but I didn't know we had four of them before. And so right now at this time, we have the approval of minutes from August the 15th. So Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All the same sign. Carried. <coughs> Go right on into our report here. Cemetery Restoration <coughs> Assistance Report. Donald Greenfeather. Look at Donald. Uh, we have an updated report on the cemetery. Is there any questions? I think the first page is the incomplete 06. Some of them uh, are not due yet, and that uh, is explained over on the right hand column. Sent out letters from time to time. Bill asked them to go ahead and spend the money. Send the receipts in. Yes, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. Any questions? Any other questions? Uh, uh, <coughs> on the first page, uh, it says District 4, Wycliffe. I don't believe that's mine. Huh? First page, District 4. Okay, I'll check that out. Mr. Crimmy. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Don, on, on, the, on that page, the third page back where we've got all in uh, District 2, we got mm, three, five cemeteries. Seems like a uh, fellow in the hole out there somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, have you got it? You know offhand if, they, if there's a contact number down there in, in the office for our. I can start working on these. Uh, I can check in the file, pull the files. Okay, I think, I think we need to kind of get move along a little bit. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any other questions? Good, John. You got any other reports? One, one thing uh, was brought up last month, and that is that. Uh, <coughs> Uh, we requested a list, and I probably just have to go directly to deal and get them. But uh, on the chief uh, cemetery where they're buried at, we we've asked for it and haven't got it yet. So I'll get a copy. Any other questions, Don? Uh, I Okay. Um, we're getting back to our fall activities. Yes, sir. The uh, I think. <laughs> We're getting back to our fall activities. We've been taking registration for our online classes. Last week on Wednesday, um, there were 937 online people registered. Uh, and that was Wednesday. We didn't close registration until Friday. Uh, so we're having a close to 1,000 uh, registered in those. <coughs> The only classes that we monitor are the ones that are live classes. Those pre-recorded ones that we broadcast, we don't um, watch the attendance there or monitor it. Classes began yesterday, so we'll begin to see if, how they work out. We finished the GPR work at the different cemeteries. I appreciate all the counselors' of, uh, assistance with that and making that go as quickly as possible and, and uh, all the landowners were uh, very welcoming. And so that was real good. And uh, next month at our uh, committee meeting, the, the uh, consultant, Mr. Jones, will bring you a report and maps of those the work that we did. So they'll have that. We just finished the last one last week, so he didn't have time. Um, the Heritage Center began its humanities course. They had their first uh, class on August the 28th, and they had 29 attending that class. Um, other than that, we're beginning our fall classes for the employees. They also began uh, last week, uh, I mean Monday and, all, and this week in all the different sites, like uh, here are the employees and then at the South Spa and at the uh, Man Killer Clinic. So, and we're scheduling our um, community classes. Right now we're just trying to find, uh, identify instructors for each of those sites. And we'll get that out to you as soon as possible. <coughs> and if it's in, you know, if we have to, we'll send an email and send out posters and things so that you'll have that information. And this is the schedule for our online classes. I'm going to lay them here, and if you want one, you're welcome to pick it up. Okay. Are there any questions? Um,
Mr. Chairman, yes. just a clarification before we left, and I know I think Don's already left. Did he say we needed to provide the information for him, or is he searching the information? Now? Okay, yeah. thank you. University uh, Redman Mascot discussion. Any discussion on that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. I, I didn't ask the, uh, the matter be placed on the agenda. It was uh, placed on the agenda uh, uh, in reference to a, a letter by from Margaret Quiet. Um, I would want to uh, read uh, Ms. Quiet's letter into the record, and then afterwards, if the committee would uh, allow uh, me to make uh, some comments as a uh, uh, citizen of the Cherokee Nation and not as your attorney, I would appreciate that opportunity. This is gratis. Yeah. You will not see this on any bill. Mr. Chairman, just for clarification for committee members, that letter is included in the packet. Yeah. That, uh, I just want to make sure everybody knew. Thank you. <clears throat> this is Ms. Quiet's letter. What is the uh, desire of the committee to let the talk to me? They want to work. They want to work. I do not know if Ms. Quiet is a part of the system. Her children are for sure, and I don't know if she is or not. I just I can't support that. I know that her father was a pioneer doctor in the community, and uh, they've been here for several generations. But uh, hey, you want to continue? Everything all right? This is Ms. White's uh, letter. If the rush to uh, get rid of anything referring to the American Indian continues, I guess we will soon be changing the names of our state. Oklahoma is a Choctaw word meaning red people or red men. We Oklahomans live in the most densely populated area of Native Americans in the world. That's the name Oklahoma. Settlers in the 1400s to 1600s settled along the coast in, in or near uh, Indian villages. Native Americans are in every step of our country's history. As settlers moved west, European Americans and Native Americans' lives have become more and more intertwined. You won't see the New York Cowboys as a team logo. It just would not fit. But you have the Braves, Utes, Seminoles, these Chiefs, and similar names scattered all over this country because that is where the Indians are. And the name was given with pride, not ridicule. My point is that when we take all these names away, you take away the history of us all, no matter what our ethnic background. We all have a Native American history and heritage. They say the red men must go. Dr. Larry Williams, president of Northeastern State University, announced the uh, a newspaper last month. Uh, uh, announced in the newspaper last month that the NCAA, but uh, last month, not the NCAA, but we are making the change. I know that NSU is a state school, and the Cherokee Nation legally has no say so in proposed change. But according to what I have heard, Dr. Williams is doing this because this is what the Cherokee Nation wants. I'm not sure that it is the wish of the nation, but the want of a few. I feel very strongly about this change and have made calls and written letters to Dr. Williams, two chiefs, Cherokee council members, and other leaders of the Cherokee community, as well as several alumni. I have found only two names that keep cropping up, Dr. Williams and Chief Chad Smith. Are they the we that, uh, and, and if not, who are these vocal few who make up the we? I have no, I've had no response from any of them to, uh, 
uh, of them to my left. What better name for, for us at NSU than the Red Man? In the early days of statehood, when such things as state trees, flowers, birds, color, etc., were being chosen, the state of Oklahoma was going to choose its colors from one of the state schools of higher education. They did not choose OU's crimson and cream. Chosen were Northeastern's colors green and white, because Northeastern was the oldest school of higher education in the state. Over the years, Northeastern has had a few different sporting names, but in the 20s, involved into the Redmond. After talking to people on the committee to change the, uh, the name Redmond, I have been told that the name will be changed because it is what the Cherokee Nation wants. I do not believe this to be true. William C. Bill Glory, chief of the Cthulhu's in the early seven, in the 1970s, fought this same battle to keep the Redmond name <coughs> and with the support of the tribe won. Chief Glory was proud of the name Redmond and, and said it is, it, it is, that it represented the heritage of Northeastern. It is said that Northeastern needs a new mascot. Why? NSU has not had a mascot in years. For letterheads, this, for letterheads business cards, and t-shirts, the clock tower or the front of seminary hall does nicely. For a name, for a name, Redman and Redman will suffice. These names have only been used with pride and stand for our heritage. We, we may never find out who really wants to change, but I think if the people knew the history of how the Cherokees founded the schools in the mid-1840s, and how we share the colors green and white and the name of the state of Oklahoma, no one would logically want to change. If Oklahoma was said in English, it would be Redmond. I, find, I am finding that few people know the reason Northeastern is the green and white Redmond. Why not publish the history, not erase it from our future? Since President, uh, Doc, since President Larry Williams and President Roger Webb, who preceded Dr. Williams, think the Cherokee Nation no longer wants an issue tied to the Indian culture, and so many of us do not believe that it is true, could the Tribal Council make a ruling on, on the tribe's feelings so we can settle this once and for all? What I'm asking is the Cultural Committee to bring this to a vote in the Tribal Council. If this was done, then a letter could be sent to Northeastern's president, and this would be settled one way or the other, and the question of our heritage or name would not be an issue every few years. That is Ms. Quiet's letter. Uh, at this time, I would uh, yield the floor to anyone else who wanted to make any comments and, and ask to be recognized later. I will make a, a statement from back years from whenever I was in high school, and I went to school at Charlotte, and during our history class there, we were taught that the uh, red man doesn't even apply to... Uh, identifying Indians. There's no, I was told that there was no such as red man. When Columbus discovered, we didn't want to be discovered anyway, I guess, but we were discovered, but uh, he said they look red to me. And uh, this was, this is what I was taught in school. They look red to me. And so that was more or less how uh, the Indian was identified by Columbus in the court. And that's the way I got it whenever I was going to school. And otherwise, I don't know how the other ones are teaching it.
everything else that talks about the racism inherent to the imagery given to us by other cultures in order to tie us down and hamper our growth as both as individuals and as a culture. And I think that Dr. Larry Williams and MSU should have the right to decide that on their own and go through that decision making process because we no longer own MSU. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just want to let the committee know that I know that this is an issue that we've talked about before. <clears throat> I know that uh, we are divided on our opinions about what what is honorable and what is not honorable as far as uh, uh, mascots. Uh, but I just I was approached, and I think I was referred. Uh, this lady was referred to this committee to be heard out. I know that we've discussed this time and time again, and uh, I think as a courtesy, and I think as our responsibility as counselors, our job is to listen to the people and what they want. So that's why this item was placed on the agenda, and we are visiting it again. So what the, what Mrs. Quiet has asked <coughs> is that we. Since it was not specifically named uh, in our previous discussion, I think the previous discussion was overshadowed by what some took as an uh, attempt to change the Sequoia High School's name and mascot. Uh, NSU was uh, overlooked. So I think what she is asking us is to specifically address NSU's issue. And if we act or we don't act, we vote up or we vote down on this request, then that, that information could be passed on okay. to Mrs. Quiet and hopefully will satisfy her request. So, so I apologize if this issue has been on the agenda before, but I believe <coughs> we needed to address her request, and so that's why it was put on. Thank you. Mr. Martin. Well, uh, personally, speaking for myself, I do not have a, an issue with this. And I know it is a, a divisive issue among people across the United States, especially Native Americans, uh, Indians, or whatever we have we're titled. Uh, uh, you know, what high school we were, we are, we're still well Indians. Uh, I went to high school and high school Indians up there, and, uh, you know, I, I was I'm very proud of the title, you know, the identity, the way I look at it, uh, uh, using those as an example, but when, uh, to me, when uh, we're discussing this issue with this is a this is a state college, Northeastern State University. Uh, to me, if that issue is their issue, I can't see and can't understand how we, as a body of uh, legislative body of the Cherokee Nation, uh, I just don't see why and how we need to be involved in this thing. You know. Uh, maybe I'm missing something, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, in this, but I'm telling you my personal feeling. I just don't have a problem with uh, how the name derived at Red Man, uh, that's uh, identity. Uh, but, uh, someone mentioned this the other day, their colors don't even, they're not even the totally opposite of red. How they derived at that, how they arrived at their colors and the mascot or not, I don't know. Uh, I, I want to go on record, Mr. Chairman. I don't want to be involved in this. Be we. Thank you. Ms. Turner. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to know where did that come from? Do us that, buddy. I, I just was approached this weekend actually at church about this issue and uh, Representative uh, Brown asked uh, what the opinion was of this council and because basically it, 
the request is coming from the tribe, but it's not necessarily a unified effort by the, from the tribe. Um, of course, I've known Miss Quiet for, for many years, and anyone that's had any psychology courses had her husband at Northeastern for classes, um, Dr. Quiet. But what, what they're asking is, <clears throat> is this something that all Cherokee Nation wants? Or is this something that, uh, like the letter says, only a few are asking for? Um, I think uh, Representative Brown just asked, or just gave me information this weekend that as far as NCAA is concerned, um, there was another university, a smaller university like ours, that uh, had the name Redskins, and they changed their name to Redmen, and it was acceptable uh, to the NCAA. Um, I, don't, I don't feel like it's anything derogatory. Uh, when these folks, I've heard from Jack Dobbins, I've heard from people in this community that are, have uh, long, long histories <coughs> with the university, and they're they're very upset that this is even an issue. So, um, you know, I have to go. I have I know that the that the folks here in this district in Cherokee County area. Uh, for the most part are opposed to this and they're not people that are not educated and they're, they're people that have uh, very high degrees and they feel very strongly about this school as you, as most people do about their own water so um, when it comes to things like this cha making changes this drastic this it's very important to the people so uh, with that I you know I support their efforts and I, I feel like we've done this throughout the United States. A few said, let's don't have prayer in school. So guess what? We don't have prayer in school. Now we got guns. You know, I mean, that's, that's just a, that's just an example. Uh, don't take away the things that are important to people. <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh, I've gotten a lot of the same phone calls that, that Auger has from, from some uh, uh, people that I highly respect. Uh, I've talked to a lot of our tribal members, and at least in Cherokee County, the, for the most part, or I haven't had anybody, really, that has gone to NSU that does not look at the Redmond with pride. <laughs> they, they play ball as Redmond, they uh, uh, graduated as Redmond, you know, my grandmother graduated as a Redmond. My folks graduated as Redmond. I graduated as a Redmond. My kids have graduated as a Redmond. And, uh, and I'm assuming the sixth generation will be coming through for a while. And uh, I have never, from the time I was little, going to the, the ball games at five and six, ever once thought that that it was a bad thing that we were the Northeastern race. And, uh, I mean, the other day we won a ball game and across the front page of the newspaper is, is that the Redmond uh, uh, had won. And, and I thought, you know, how weird is it going to be to, to be the, uh, the Eagles or the, you know, something else uh, when you would be hard-pressed to find a university any place in the United States that graduates more Cherokees than Northeastern State University. Uh, maybe, and I don't even think Haskell. Haskell would have maybe a higher percentage of Native Americans, but I don't think there's a university any place that graduates more Cherokees. And we have partnerships with the university. They've got Native American studies. They're teaching Cherokee. Uh, have a degree in Cherokee. Uh, it was the female seminary. We have, you know, we will be tied to the university from now on. It will always be tied to the Cherokee Nation and our heritage and our history and our culture. And uh, and if you don't have a dog in this fight, then, then it's done. But I want to move that we as a committee send a recommendation that they do this item is for discussion. I only need to 
I'd move to amend the agenda. Second. The motion is uh, to bring it to the uh, agenda to bring this to a vote. Make a statement. Has been second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. I would like to address the, uh, the, the committee, as, as I said earlier, as a church citizen. This matter is, is, is coming to a head. It is uh, at homecoming this week is going to be proposed vote on whether, to, or, or as President Williams says, check NASCAR for the change, but there is a big movement throughout the community to at least put Redmond on the ballot. Uh, we, we will do the dialogue with the will of the people, but if Redmond is on the ballot, the student and alumni should be able to get the vote on it. The question is, is why is North, is why is the Cherokee Nation concerned with this issue? Well, President Williams stated that he believed that the, the stakeholders of the university should make this decision and not outside forces. And I agree with him. Uh, stakeholders obviously would include students, would include alumni, in my opinion, it would include the Cherokee Nation, because as Mr. Baker stated earlier, the history of the Cherokee Nation in Northeastern is inseparable. And I believe it's so appropriate that this issue be first brought up in the Language and Culture Committee, because literally the bricks and mortar of the Cherokee Nation culture and heritage is at Northeastern. Those bricks that still stand today have the Chief Cherokee Female Seminary, the oldest high institute of higher education west of the Mississippi. Cherokee history and Northeastern history are the same. Northeastern houses the Center of Tribal Study. You can get a degree in tribal administration. You have Cherokee history courses, Cherokee language courses. It has the highest percentage of Native American students <coughs> in any four-year college in the United States. If anyone deserves the name, Mass, uh, the name Redmond, it's Northeastern in my opinion. Now for 82 years, Northeastern has, has, has had the moniker Redmond, and it's been used with pride and dignity for every one of those 82 years. Not all Indian mascots are good. I'll be the first to say that. If we were the Northeastern Savages or the Northeastern Redskins, you wouldn't hear me speak on this issue here today. <coughs> I'm not going to defend all Indian mascots. But what I am going to defend is the Red. Because just as not all Indian mascots are, are bad, not all in, not uh, all the, some many mascots are good. I believe the Northeastern Redmond is a good use of mascot. Very similar to the school up on the hill, Sequoia High School Indians. Because what does those mascots portray? Bravery, strength, intelligence, the undying spirit of the Native American. A mascot is chosen to, to, to embody everything that you want to be. 
It's not chosen to degrade or ridicule. It's what you want to be. Now, I'm a good old Cherokee boy from South Adair County. And let me tell you folks, you want to talk about Indian country, that's Indian country. Because for the most part, we were poor, we were rural, and we were Indian. Now, I went to high school, as Mr. Martin stated, at Stillwell High School. I went to the big city high school. You know, that was the big town in Adair County. And we were called the Indians. And at Stillwell High School, you had people of privilege. You had the upper middle class. But when we walked out on that court, when we walked out on that field, we were all Indians. And that made me proud. That made me walk a little taller in the class in the, in the hallways. Because when we all walked out there on that court and on that field, and we called ourselves Indians, the other people wanted to be something that they were not. They wanted to be like me. They wanted to be something that I was. And that made me proud. Now I took that same part of, uh, I had the privilege to go to Northeastern State University which was called the Redman. And I had that same pride there. Now, I wasn't on the football team or the basketball team. I was on the debate team. But by golly, I was still proud about it. I was proud just to be an alumni. Because the people of all cultures came there and embodied the Redman spirit. They wanted to be something they were not. They wanted to be something that I was. And it's pride. At the end of the day, it's pride. Now, some people want to change it. I believe uh, uh, they, some people, they, they, they'll say oh, it's abusive or it's oppressive. If anyone has any connection with Northeast State University, they will they've never say that the Redmond, used, uh, Redmond name was used in an uh, oppressive or abusive way. Now, let me tell you, folks. If you want to be, I, I have always found that if the person that wants to be oppressed, they're going to find a way to be oppressed. A mascot at Northeastern State University is not going to oppress them. And if you know the history of it, you know it's you, it's you, it's you <coughs> and dignity, and we know the unique heritage of our area. Now, what 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 uh, what would we ask? I would ask for a vote, and I, I do. But Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, I do expect the I respect your opinion. It's my understanding that the base was to occur by by the council themselves, and the reason they recognize you is to clarify whether or not we need a two-thirds amendment. Oh, no, no, no. I, uh, I, I believe that I was recognized as a Cherokee citizen, not on the, the, the two thirds amendment. It, it, I wasn't. You're right. It needed the two thirds amendment to, to, to amend the agenda. I, I thought I was recognized as. as a citizen. <coughs> and, and, and I, I was from. We're still in a discussion. Mr. Chairman. I think Todd has had his say. Let's go on to something else. Thank you very much for the opportunity to address this committee of chairmen. Yes, but we still have uh, two more. The Meredith Committee. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, I think this is a passionate issue, and, and both sides should be heard and treated with dignity and respect. Um, I can understand both sides of the argument. However, I agree with Mr. Martin. Can you believe I'm agreeing with him? I do, I have strong feelings about Cherokee Nation telling the federal regions, the president, the student body, how to run their school. I think they're trying to provide a non discriminatory environment there. Um, I don't believe it's our place to tell them how to run their school. I certainly wouldn't want them coming here and telling us how to govern the Cherokee Nation. Um, on the other hand, Symbols are extremely important to people uh, and organizations. They provide a link between the past, the present, and the future. And I don't think it's
it's necessary to abolish the, the mascot or the red man name, but perhaps it could be retired in, a, in an honorable way in their school's Hall of Fame. Um, this would bring an honorable closure um, to symbols of the past, and <clears throat> at the same time that the student body decide the symbol of the future. Um, it's a very passionate issue, but I just don't think it's our place to be telling them how, how, what they should and should not do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, we don't want to go over time and stuff like that, but uh, we'll let you be uh, My name's Greg Simmons. I'm, in a, I'm a board member of the NSU Alumni Association. I'm a lifetime member of the NSU Alumni Association. And I'm a two-time NSU Hall of Fame member. And The, the Cherokee Nation has a spot on the committee. Northeastern has made the decision to change the mascot. I'm a proud alumni, and I know there's people on both sides of this issue, but there is a committee at NSU that involves alumni, students, faculty, a member from the Cherokee Nation is on that committee, and it is ju their job to discuss this issue. I'm over here. Perfect. Who is that? I believe the chief appointed Mike Miller. Okay. I'm not exactly sure on that. Okay. that that's what I believe. Okay. Uh, and it's it's my belief as an alumni. I've spoken with President Williams uh, when President Williams came, and he started selecting students to sit down in groups and talk about issues with the university. I was in those groups. He talked about this issue within the first weeks when he came to school there. Um, I have felt it's been coming for a long time. Of course it got uh, brought to a head because of the NCAA. Uh, and it got in the spotlight. But I do not believe this is a rash uh, decision he made on this part. He has been talking about this uh, in small groups for a long time. He came and addressed the Alumni Association uh, during our last board meeting and uh, gave reasons for this. Uh, and the main reason he said is he believed it was the right thing to do. Uh, he believed that the uh, it was not the university's place to use a race of people as a mascot. And a Center for Higher Learning, uh, part of the responsibility there was to create social consciousness. And uh, I believe it's the university's job to do that. And so I just wanted to address you as a member of the Alumni Association and, uh, and tell you that no matter what side you believe on on this issue? I believe the decision has been made, and uh, and I don't believe supporting or opposing in one way or another uh, is going to help the issue one way or the other. Um, I believe the decision's been made, and we need to move forward. There's a set of criteria to put, to pick a, a new mascot, and I believe retiring the mascot in a respectable manner is something we will do during our centennial celebration. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. A couple of quick questions. Yes, sir. The, in this voting, is Redmond going to be one of the choices? Uh, Redmond is not uh, in the selection criteria. Redmond will not be on there, no. Right. And uh, if the write-in vote is overwhelming, Redmond won't? Uh, I believe I'm not on the selection committee, but I believe that's something the selection committee would have to address at that time. And you as a tribal citizen, are you offended by Redmond? I am not personally, no, uh, but I do not believe a university should uh, do something if it offends anybody. I don't think anybody should not choose Northeastern. I love Northeastern. I believe everybody should have the opportunity to go there and love the school as much as I did. And if that name offends one person, then I believe it should be changed. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Crick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll, I'll be brief. I, I want to go on record as, as supporting our, our school over there in Edgar County, the civil Indians. And I also want to 
go on record as saying I support the North Sea, Northeastern State Red. Uh, I think our, our world is full of, uh, not full, but there's some people out there that's worried about political correctness all the time. And personally, I don't think they got enough to do. There's a lot more worthwhile things to take care of in this world, like hunting Osama bin Laden and, and doing away with world hunger. They ought to gather up a group of them and uh, go over and do something that's uh, got some meaning to it. And if that's too tough for them, they could look for Sasquatch or Nessie or do a study on persimmons to see how our winter is going to shape up this year. Uh, that's my comment. All right. We'll go to uh, any other comment? Just real quick, if we wanted to really get into this, we could say the Cherokee Nation could come together and, and boycott University of Oklahoma, they are the Sooners. What does the Sooners represent? The land run. What did they do? They came and took our land. <laughs> OSU Cowboys. What did everybody play? Cowboys and Indians. Who always lost? The Indians. I mean, we could really go a long way with this battle. But I would just hope that we'd support our, our local schools. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Let's leave the Cowboys out of this. <laughs> now she's called the bat. All right. All right. That's it. That's all I have. Thank you. I'm finished. All right. <laughs> Let's get back to order here. <laughs> what is the desire of the committee on on this uh, the old business of number two? Uh, North, uh, huh? Sorry, Mr. Chairman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Closed discussion. All right. Let's go to uh, number three here. Turkey Artist Association copyright issue and request for proposal. Anybody sponsor that? Mr. Chairman, I think uh, the uh, Turkey Artist Association has someone here to speak to this. Do we have uh, anyone that wants to speak to this from the Artist Association? All right. My name is uh, Bill Glass Jr. And uh, I'm passing out a little handout that I've been working on and uh, this issue has come uh, before our artist association numerous times, you know, even at the Give us just a second right here to read over this just for a little bit. Okay, I, I, I like, if you don't mind, I'll just read it because that's pretty much my, right. yeah, my, uh, right on that's my speech. <laughs> right. okay. I'm not a very good speaker, but that's why I wrote it down. Uh, Everybody got a copy? I Bill Glass Jr. as a turkey artist and chairperson of the advisory committee for the Turkey Artists Association would like to thank you for this opportunity to address this committee and would also like to thank the committee for its current involvement and interest in arts and culture to a level that we as artists have not seen in the past. As artists we are grateful for the new legislation in which 1% of all new construction costs goes to the purchase of artwork. We would also like to thank you for the money allocated to the Artists Association and we welcome the new opportunities and intend on showing the talent that each one of us possesses. Along with this newfound interest in the arts, as artists, it is our responsibility to speak up when we see it necessary to keep current purchasing policies from becoming precedents that burden the artists. Your committee and the Turkey artists must plan the future for the arts in a correct manner so that it will become a foundation for artists to come seven generations in the future. The Artists Association membership has debated the current policy on the purchasing of art from tribal members numerous times and would like to go on record with our opinion. Today we are asking you as, a council, you as council members to make a change in this policy. And these are our reasons. By U.S. law, 17 U.S.C. 1, 
one. I don't know what that ET means, <laughs> but I guess that's a law thing. Uh, copyright law. It's known as the copyright law. And the other one is the Visual Rights Act. The copyrights reside with the artist. That's a United States law where that that's stated. And artists should not have to give up these rights just to do business with the Cherokee Nation. Why should an artist have to agree to give them up something that they already own and then license back rights from the buyer? Control resides with the copyright holder, not with the licensee. As the current purchasing policy has it, they want to buy our copyrights when they purchase our pieces of work, of artwork. But like Bill Rabbit said, nowhere in his 30 years of, a, of a, an artist, no other patron ever, you know, has ever required that of us. And that's just, you know, never been done, me neither. Nobody's ever got my copyrights, you know, and that's something the artists try to keep. So, see, control would reside with the copyright holder. I'll get on to a few more reasons why. Artists have no reasonable way to put a value on an open-ended copyright without knowing how many items that could be reproduced. So you lose that right to, to control the, the number. <clears throat> control of the digital size would be out of the artist's hands. Quality control by the artist can't be lost and this reflects on the image and reputation that we have built during our careers. We, we establish ourselves on the quality of our work. If, if, a, if a copyright, if they take it to the printer and start printing it and don't print the colors the right way that you intended, then your, your uh, reputation is damaged because they're not producing quality, the work to a level that you expect, you know. The artist usually, when they do prints, the artist goes there and checks the colors and, and goes through the process with the printer and you know makes it so it comes out where his reputation is stays intact. Copyright holder will also determine the selling price of the reproductions. When you lose your copyright, there they got it all. They can sell it for whatever they want to make for it. Yeah. So, uh, so if this price is too low, it will make the artist compete against himself if he has a similar product. So by doing, say they did 2,000 or 3,000 or however many, maybe an unlimited edition, and then the artist is also producing another same similar product, they could undercut that artist's price real easy. I mean, they, they could be producing something that maybe just cost them, oh, three or four dollars to produce, and they could sell it for $25, where the artist, if he's making something similar, he might have to charge 60 or 70, 100 dollars. You know, it could very easily happen by volume, just sheer volume of numbers. Way too many uncertainties exist that could hurt the artist's business. Even if an artist is granted partial reproduction rights, certain products take time to figure out the process with the intention of doing several in a series. <laughs> As a copyright holder, c &E could study the design and reproduce the item in a larger volume than artists ever could hope to do, you know, hope to. Why should anyone give up this developmental time? That's true. I, we did a piece for the show at the, at the, um, at the uh, uh, Army this year, and it took us three months just to develop the pattern to do it. But if that, if if they would, if somebody comes in and buys my copyrights and studies our layout and our, our techniques, they could reproduce that and cut me out of what I had intended to do to reproduce a few of my own. You know, they they could they could just study our developmental time. You know, just let somebody develop some. And also, and that that also could be like say uh, Chief Smith's clocks. You know, he's got developmental time into his clocks. He developed that. If, the, if, if somebody comes in and gets his copyrights, see, he's out all that time that he went into producing that and developed that, that, that series of clocks that he's making. 
that could he would lose, you know, if, they, if he if this applied to him too, that would affect the same instance. Another example. Our association also sees the purchasing of copyrights as being wasteful of art monies because of the fact that purchasing the copyright from an artist that will never be used is wasteful. The committee should find out how many how much money has been spent on purchasing copyrights and how this figure is derived at. This money should go toward the purchasing of other artists' work. There are some artwork that may never get reproduced at all. You know, say uh, there's going to be some things that just won't get re reproduced. And why should should you spend money to buy that copyright for that item when that's just waste? I mean, that's just wasted money, as I see it, because you never might never reproduce that item or have any intentions of reproducing it anyway. That, that could go to buying somebody else's work. You know, spread that money around and get more artists in your collection. We as churches know that many governmental agreements have long been forgotten. Uh, and this makes us very leery of any kind of any type of licensing agreement that would be proposed. Administrations change, people change jobs. We are uneasy with the right with what this might bring. We would prefer that a separate agreement be negotiated at the time that any reproductions might be made to keep everything clear and up to date. That just sounds reasonable. If you buy if they got my copyright today, but ten years down the road they start reproducing something, shoot, I done <laughs> kind of got off on another track of things and all of a sudden I start seeing pieces appear. That's, you know, and even the community, this is where I see as council, community people aren't going to understand that. They're going to see that they got their money and they, they, they went and use that money, but then they start seeing, uh, say, cards or no cards or something up here and they start saying, hey, how come I'm not getting a little bit of that? And they have to come back to you guys and then you have to tell them, oh, you sold that right. You know, and they're going to say, hey, huh? that was a long time ago. You know, that's just going to happen. So pretty soon somebody's going to approach you guys and say, hey. And then you're going to say, oh, you, you lost your right for that. And, you know, to me, that's that's the council needs to protect them. I, I feel, you know, I don't know, but that's what I feel. Uh, if it's a separate agreement, when, that, when they want to reproduce something, It'll be say, okay, we want to reproduce something, and they call them in, say, okay, let's, and then that reminds them. See, that reminds, them, okay, now we got another agreement. We drop a new contract. We're going to do this, and they outline how many they're going to do, and everything, and they come to agreement on percentages. You know, it's just a separate agreement at, a, at the current time that things are going to happen. Would the artist have the right to amend the agreement if a business opportunity presented itself? What if something unforeseen comes up and you wanted to use that piece in a traveling exhibit, say, or something like that? You wanted to to have the right to, you know, uh, send that piece on on tour or something. And would we have the right if if we forgot to sign that agreement and put that in the original contract? Would we have the right to amend it? If this this shouldn't be a problem if the artist continues to own the copyrights anyway. You know, that should be one of the things that they could do it from the beginning if, if they had control of their own copyrights. So, uh, very few artists have any type of retirement plan or assets to leave to our loved ones. That's true. Our life is a struggle. That's very true. Our copyrights is one thing that we would like to leave them. That's just one thing that we can pass, pass on to our kids and and they can pass it on. You know, it's it's written in that law that I stated at first that the family gets the copyrights for 75 years after the after the death of the artist. So that's something that can be left to your kids. We would like to have a fair and simple standardized contract that would be easily understood by all artists. I am of the opinion that when a tribally owned business creates its own creates its own advantage at the expense of tribal members, it is the duty of the council to step in and correct the matter. 
as representatives of the people and not the business. Sometimes tribal businesses will conflict with the interests of the people, but as council, you guys have to protect the people. That's that's how I feel. I don't, you know, that's my personal opinion on that. But that is one thing very true. I I got once, just the very last. I'm almost done. All right. In conclusion, we realize that there are certain advertising, educational, and art promotions that the tribe may want to use as photographs for the artwork for of the artwork for and would agree to this provision. You know, they want to use those for promotions, so we agree to that. The art purchasing policy needs to be simple, clear, to all that read it with fairness to tribal community constituents. We believe that the attached contracts fixes and fits these needs, and I have an uh, This is our proposed contract on the very back page. So that's, this is how we can get the stand. All right, Carrie. Thank you. The, uh, the level of art that we have at our casino is fine art. I mean, there's not, I mean, I'm a lay person. I try to understand the world and where you come from and how you do business so that we can make better decisions. But there's, to me, there's arts and crafts, which are people who do kind of more of the hobby and things. And then there's fine art, those that make a living and have exceptional works that are exquisite pieces that are unique. It takes much more time to produce. And I think that's the majority of our collection, for example, because I believe where this is coming from, for the most part, is the significant amount of work we've amassed in the casino. So those contracts, and I, I agree with almost everything that they're saying in this that Mr. Glass has shared with us, because the way I understand that a native business to evaluate their art, that they do have to track how their art is bought and sold after they release their initial piece, um, whether it's the original or even print, and then you have to control the number for uh, something going to value. Typically, you want to control and have a limited number of pieces, and and we haven't met them even halfway in what I see on this contract. And at first, I wasn't sure what the answer was, and I needed more time to think about it. And I think you guys have done an excellent job of summing it up. The issues that are involved, and I, I really appreciate you bringing this forward again and being persistent, because we need to have the casino go back, look at their contracts, and find a way to meet them. And the only, and I hate asking people to do something without offering some idea of a solution, because otherwise, I think you're just kind of complaining without really try to be part of the solution. So I don't know if this is any idea of what direction might hold, but there might be one consideration where you absolutely get what you're asking for in that contract, but instead the purchase price is just an upfront limited number of they get so many prints and so many of this, and there's no other control, and that upfront set of whatever the original piece plus X, Y, Z number of prints or copies in so many years to sell that or make them or whatever. I mean, and that's a set price up front, and they know what they're getting, and then you retain the rights, which is what you're asking for, I think, in that. Well, in that's, that. that's, where, that's where I, in the contract, that's where at the end I put anything other reproductions will be a separate agreement. That's where I put that in. That, that the, the initial piece, when you buy the original, that's, the purchase it as a regular patron, just like any other patron that comes along and buys a piece. Like if you bought a piece from me, you would get the original piece. But say down the road we wanted to work a deal, we would drop a separate agreement at the time that we wanted to drop, to reproduce some. Say we wanted to make molds and make some bronzes, we would at that time drop another agreement to cover that. So that's how I. That's why we have that last line in there. At the end, where if somebody wants to reproduce, we drop a separate agreement at that time to cover that issue. That's that's how we would like to handle that. Um, there's so you can look at like up front, if it's a certain package, and we retain all the rights. And I'm saying all this because I'm, I know you know why it's back there. I think it's because I'm just seeing these interests today. Because um, I think seeing these leading the way in our purchases. So you'd be setting the example in the contract. 
and or look at how like the controls on the copy and the percent that you get for every sale we make on your copies or something. I'm looking for some kind of compromise from both parties to come back and to find a way to work together. But I do agree, I think it's ludicrous. The original contract was just extreme. And I think it did take advantage of the artist. But, you know, those are then deals. Those are legal contracts that we all entered into, or I shouldn't say all because I didn't sign it. But seeing the casino and the artist entered into at that time. So I don't know if there's any remedy for past. But I think we can look forward in how we can work together. But the next time I'm together in front of this, I hope that that means that there's a compromise that we're looking at and it's a celebration in how we can do art. Because part of the reason we purchase the art is to create value and find arts in the church of nation. Because I don't want to fall behind in how we value Indian art in general. And it's sad. Um, so we were, part of that was how we create value in our own community, and I don't think we've done that by the way we've done our contracts in that. Excuse me here as we go through, and uh, we're going in to get the time over there. We're 10 minutes over two here, but I will let the, I've got three more that need to speak, and I'm going to give you just about a minute and a half piece to go through this. Go to Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Glass, very yes. glad you all are here today and, and the association and I uh, appreciate you acknowledging the fact that we, as a nation, CNE, whatever it is, trying to buy work from the artist. And um, previous, when I was on the CNE side, we tried to handle this on a case-by-case -case basis so that, you know, as some of the artists wanted to, they were finally giving up their copyrights and they negotiated a deal at the time and we went on. Um, I guess I'm going to ask uh, Gina to say how the policy has changed. Are we are we actually demanding the intellectual property rights when we buy a piece, and is it a, for original work of art or a print? Mr. Chair, is it okay that I address the make professor? Brief, I will make it as brief as possible. All the art that we have selected, that we have negotiated with the artist on copyright issues. So the contract that Mr. Glass has is not a set in stone contract. There are four artists off the top of my head that I can tell you about that we have negotiated some sort of copyright, giving them back to them or no copyright at all or whatever. So this is not a set in stone contract. So, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, my point is that I, I think the policy is still the same that we're handling it on a case by case basis. Okay, so we haven't changed our policy. We're, and we're not asking them they have to give up their copyrights. And I, I would not support us doing that either. Thank you. And for the record, um, all the artists except Mr. Glass and his son have signed the contracts at CME with us negotiating the terms of, of the contract. All right. You? That's okay. All my questions have been answered to you all this morning. I've got a copy of my contract that, that I was sent from c and &E if, if uh, you don't put that into, uh, you know, your records. And I've got a copy of uh, Mary Adair's contract, too. And, uh, <coughs> we don't, you know, artists have to struggle to, to survive, so some people have to sell, sell their art, no matter what the contract reads. They've got to make a living at just trying to survive as artists. That's even if it's a bad deal, people have to try to make a living. I mean, I mean, I can't. I'm not against anybody that had to go ahead and sign that to, to live. I mean, I'm not opposed to anybody agreeing to the contract. It's just a, it's a tough life, you know. It's, you gotta try to make some money when you can. But I'm not gonna. I can't give away my copyrights like an open-ended com copyright. That doesn't make sense. As a Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Briefly, if I can, uh, I'd like to get Mr. Hembry uh, involved in this. Uh, Todd, uh, how familiar are you with this situation? Uh, you don't have to go into uh, a lot of uh, detail, but the, re the point I'm trying to make is uh, it sounds like something that we do need to deal with. I would add the, the committee to allow Mr. Henry to look at this proposal. Jackie, Bob. Yeah. 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 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If it required uh, a resolution to bring forth a resolution the next uh, month meeting that uh, the committee could uh, discuss and go on. Well, I was recommended, and I uh, just was uh, looked at Mr. Glass's uh, statement in, in contracts. Uh, and Mr. Glass has, has a very good point. I mean, the, the artist and, and, and the buyer are often in such a, a huge best position that, you know, you know, you just, I just said to put bread on the table. Sometimes you just gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. So, you know, it would be a benefit to Cherokee Nation to uh, make sure that uh, that Cherokee artists uh, had more of a uh, even table setting uh, uh, to, to make sure that their interests were protected. And that would, that, that would be a, an appropriate interest of this community to make sure that, uh, uh, that, that the rights of the, uh, that, that, that are Cherokee artists are not taken advantage of. I'd be happy to look at this contract work with Mr. Glass and even with CNE to make sure that we come up with a compromise to make sure that happens. All right. I uh, still have the floor, Mr. Uh, Mr. Right. Chairman. Okay. I'm going to make a motion that we table this till the next month meeting so that we can have more information and we can discuss the vote. Second. Yeah. Jack, uh, I have Jack. a question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So this will be able to for another next month. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we agree, and I'm sure that we still got uh, one more here to go. Right. Right. And this is number four. Uh, possible amending the LA number 33-04 is uh, an act protecting and breaking uh, traditional Turkey cemeteries. Place on the agenda for discussion last time, and I moved to table it. Uh, all right, all right. All in, uh, do I have a second? All right, do I have a second here? All in favor to uh, table this so that I, first meeting? I, both same sign, carried. Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, table, yes. Did we approve our cemetery? Not yet, but we we're going to get there. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. Back into uh, new business here now. Uh, approval of cemetery restoration assistant application. I make a motion we I make a motion we approve district four. Uh, include district two. Uh, 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 yes. Two and four. Amendment. Can we just uh, approve the list as presented? For all no, of that's good. Okay. <laughs> All, right. all in favor to accept all the, that's listed here for the approval? Written by the aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carry. All the all issues. Okay. All right. Uh, any announcement? Make a motion to adjourn. Aye. Uh, all in favor? Second. Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Employment, two minutes.